My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the math problems from this book. If there is any problem that gives you trouble, you can find the solution to it from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book happens to contain almost all the same problem and, and in most cases in exactly, on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are done, we are finished, we are done doing all the math problem from this book. We are finished doing all of them from here. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to any of the problems, you will find the original solutions to the problems from day number 1 through 250. Original, prob original solutions you will find are a little bit lengthier and they go a little bit in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important questions. They are still a big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately, the other two books do not provide us enough practice question. So to get some more practice questions, to get some more practice on quantitative comparison question, we started solving some of them from this book from day number 401. Right now we are on page number 265. Let's turn to it, page number 265, problem number 1. Problem number 1. As I always remind you, as soon as I finish setting up the problem, you must pause the video immediately, solve the thing yourself, no matter how simple it looks, and then, you and then you compare your work against the work we do together. Do you understand? That's how, that's how you're going to get something more out of it. Don't just sit there passively. It should be an, an active uh, exercise. Do you understand? Page number 265, question number 1. When it was given in the exam, it was, as you can see, it's a quite straightforward question. 82% of the people had no trouble with it. Only about a fifth of the people missed it. Here's the question. We are asked to compare 3960 divided by 65 versus 60. Column A, column B. I want you to pause the video and do it without a calculator. Okay, doing with a calculator, there's no bloody point in it. Do it without a calculator. I'll give you two seconds to do pause and unpause, so do it yourself. So here we go. You see, we are told to divide. 3960 by 65. 3960 by 65. As you can see, to try to divide this number by 65 will take some time. It will be very annoying, very cumbersome. So don't do that. Let's multiply both columns by 65. Multiply both columns by 65. If you multiply both columns by 65, you multiply this column by 65, you multiply the second column by 65, 65 drops out. And now it's much easier to multiply the two numbers as opposed to divide the two numbers. 65 times 60, let's find out. So that's just 0. 6 times 5 is 30. 3, carry 3. 6, 6 is 30, 36. 36 plus 3 is 39. There we go, we are done. 3900. 3900 versus 3960. 3960 is bigger. The answer is A. Let's do one more. I'm going to give you five bonus problems, and each time, do it yourself first. Pause it immediately. Here we go, next one. 415. 415 divided by 6 versus 70. 460 divided by 6 versus 70. As you can see, there is nothing to it. Multiply both columns by 6. Multiply both columns by 6. 6 drops out. We have 415 here, and here we have 70 times 6. 7, 7 6 are 42 with a zero there at the end, so it's 420 versus 415, 420 is bigger, the answer is B. Let's do one more. This is bonus question number two. <coughs> 93 divided by 4 versus 24, you get the idea. Multiply both sides by 20, multiply both columns by 24, 24 drops out, and how much is 24 times 4? How much is 24 times 4? How the hell do I know? I know 25 times 4, I know 25 times 4 is 100, 
If 25 times 4 is 100, then 24 times 4 has to be 4 less than 100. It has to be 96, which makes perfect sense because 4 4s are 16. It has to end in a 6. It has to end in a 6. 96 versus 93. 96 is bigger. The answer is B. Let's do one more. Number 3. Number 3. 5 7 versus 4 5 5 7 versus 4 5. What can we do here? Do it yourself first. Do it yourself. Try to get rid of the bottom part as soon as you can. You don't want anything in the bottom that's annoying. Here's what we do. We want to get rid of the 7 from the bottom. How do we get rid of the 7 from the bottom in the first column? It's very simple. Multiply both columns by 7. If you multiply this column by 7, and multiply that column by 7, the 7 goes away from the bottom. But we still have a 5 over here at the bottom. How do we get rid of that 5? Well, again, multiply both sides by 5. Multiply both columns by 5. And that will, that will get rid of the 5. That's it, we're done. So here we end up with 5 times 5, which is 25. And here we have 4 times 7, which is 28. 28 is bigger, the answer is B. Other way, other way, to solve this problem, which will save you a couple of seconds in the exam, I'm going to show you a shortcut here. But that's the theory behind it. That's the theory. Now we're going to do the same exact thing, a little bit more directly. It will save us, as I said, a couple of seconds. But the theory does not change. That's what we're doing there. Here's what we do. When we have to compare two fractions, 5 7, 5 7 versus 4 5th versus 4 5th, when we have to compare two fractions, what you do is, we multiply the bottom from the top, 5 times 5, 5 times 5, we end up here in this column, which is exactly what we have here, and then 7 times 4, 7 times 4, which is exactly what we have here. That's it, that's another way of doing it, but essentially what you're doing here, what's going on behind the curtain here, what's going on behind the curtain, is this theory right here. What we're doing here is that we're multiplying both columns by 7 to get rid of this 7, and then we, and that's where the, that's how the seven appears here. And then we multiply both columns by five to get rid of this five, and that five ends up here. It ends up on top here. That's what's going on here. So this is this is what's going on behind the curtain. This is what you see on the stage. Interesting. Let's do one more. Number four. Two thousand nine hundred and seven. This is number four divided by 5 versus 599. Of course by now it's quite straightforward. You know what to do. Multiply both columns by 5. 5 drops out. And how much is 599 times 5? How the hell do I know 599 times 5? I don't go around memorizing that. I do know what 600 times 5 is. 600 times 5 is very easy. 600 times 5 is very easy because I know 6 5 is a 30. If 6 5 is a 30, 600 times 5 is 3000. If 600 times 5 is 3000, then 599, which is 1 less than 600 times 5, instead of, instead of having 600 fives, instead of having 600 fives, we only have 599 fives. It's just going to be 5 less than that. It's just going to be 5 less than that, minus 5, which is 2995. 2995 versus 2997. The answer is A. The answer is A. Let's do one more. Number five. Let's do one more. Do it yourself. 35 over 3. 35 over 3 versus 23 over 2. Versus 23 over 2. 35 over 3 versus 23 over 2. So do it yourself. I'll give you a second. Again, the same exact thing. Multiply both sides by 3. The 3 drops out. Multiply both columns by 2. The 2 drops out. And we end up with 35 times 2. 35 times 2 versus... 23 times 3, 35 times 2 is 70, 23 times 3 is 69, 70 is bigger, the answer is 3.
No. If you want to save yourself a couple of seconds, you could have done what we just did, what we just learned a little while ago, which is to simply use our arrows. Make sure you carry enough of uh, your arsenal when you walk in the room to take the exam. Make sure you have a bag full of arrows and use some arrows. There we go. This is 35 times 2, which is exactly what we have here. And 3 times 23. 3 times 23, which is exactly what we have here. But that's what's going on behind the curtain as we explain. Of course, this problem is so simple. This problem actually is so simple that we could actually do it out. It only takes a second to do it out. Let's do it out actually instead of going like this. But we're not going to do it out in a problem where the numbers are a little bit more complicated and it will take some time. But this is too simple. We have 35 over 3. 35 over 3 versus 23 over 2. Let's find out what that is, shall we? Let's find out what that is. How many 3's in a 3? 3 has 1 3. 3 has 1 3. That was easy. How many 3's in a 5? 5 has 1 3 as well. 5 has 1 3. We will have a remainder of 2. Remainder of 2 being divided by 3. So it's 11 and 2 thirds. It's 11 and 2 thirds. Let's go here. How many 2's in a 2? Two? 2 has only 1 2. How many 2's in a 3? Three? 3 has 1 2. And with the remainder of 1, that remainder of 1 being divided by 2, so it's 11 and a half. Of course, 11 and a half is less than 11 and 2 thirds. 11 and 2 thirds is bigger than 11 and a half. So there are several different ways of looking at it, you understand? Let's go to problem number two. We have been taking too long here. Problem number two. Problem number two, when it was given in the exam, 82% of the people had no trouble with it. Here's what we are told. We are told that X scored 10 points, 10 points in the, in the first half of the game. We are told that X scored 10 points in the first half of the game. Y, we are told, scored 15 points more than X in the second half of the game. Y scored 15 points more than X in the second half of the game. And what we are being asked to compare is this. The points, points scored, points scored by X in the, in the first half, point scored by X in the first half versus point scored by y in the first half. Do what you have to do, pause the video, do it yourself and then we'll compare the work, okay? first column is very straightforward. The first column is very straightforward because it's asking us for the points that are scored by X in the first half. It says right there, X has scored 10 points in the first half. That's right there. Points scored by X in the first half is 10. That was very straightforward. Let's move on here. Point scored by Y in the first half. How many points did Y score in the first half? Do they tell us that? The answer is no. The answer is no. They only tell us that in, second, in the second half, Y scored 15 points more. Even if they were asking for the numbers, even if they were asking for the points scored by Y in the second half, even if they were asking for the second half, we still couldn't answer that because all we know is that it scores 15 points more than X in the second half. This is second half. This is not the first half. If they had said Y scored 15 points more than X in the first half, then we were done because we know that this guy scored 10 points, then he must have scored 25 points. But this is not. This is second half. This is not the first half. So there is no way to figure out the points scored by Y in the first half. There is no way to figure it out. The answer is B. We're comparing 10 versus some unknown quantity. Of course, or we cannot tell. It depends. Let's do the next one. Number three. Question number three. Now 
if you have the book in front of you, if you have the book in front of you, you will see that question number three actually, there is no point in doing question number three because we have done plenty of them already. Here's question number three. You're being asked to compare 5.8, 5.8 versus 7.11. Versus 7.11. Do it yourself and then we'll, then we'll compare the work, okay? Question number 3, 5, 8 versus 7, 11. Very straightforward, very simple. You can do it this method. That's it. Use the arrows. As I said, it's going to be, or you can do it the classical way, which is get rid of this 8. How do we get rid of this 8 from, how do we get rid of this 8 from the bottom in the first column? Multiply both columns by 8. That will get rid of the 8. How do we get rid of the 11 from the second column? Multiply both columns by 11. That we'll get rid of this 11 and we end up with 5 times 11 which is 5 times 11 which is 55 and here we end up with 7 times 8 how much are 7 8 I know 7 7 I know my 7 7 because 7 squared is 49 7 7 is a 49 if you add one more 7 to 8 7 7 49 plus 1 would be 50 and then another 6 would be 56 the answer is B or as I said you could have just we could have used just used our arrows 5 8 versus 7 11 right there just like that 8 times 7 versus 11 times 5 55 is less than 56 I'll see you tomorrow okay bye now